Before we begin, I just want to say, dude, we fucking did it. Yeah. We, we did, did it. it. We hit 100,000 followers 100, 000, on TikTok, baby. baby. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy. I, like, I know that a lot of people have millions and stuff, but you know what? We have to celebrate the little wins. 100,000. That's great. Dude. Con- hey, the crew, thank you so much for following us on yeah. uh, the Bottle Club pod. Like, yeah. I, like, before we, like, I just fucking, I, I just fucking L U V U so much. Crew, I just wanted to break away from the episode just to specifically say thank you. We hit 100,000 followers on TikTok. We're slowly growing. Um, We're seeing a rise. We're trying to make this podcast a reality. And I just want to say thank you because without you, we're nothing. Do you know how hard this is? So we started in March, yeah. well, not you and me, another individual. Yeah, you you didn't. Yeah, it wasn't me. It wasn't you. We did eight episodes. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. People don't know that after you're done with the podcast, you have to go in, you have to edit it, you have to put clips together. Yeah. And then after that, you sweat and you're nervous and you're like, oh my God, is it going to amount to anything? Yeah. And you have to remind people, this is very key, that are always afraid to put something out is that you always start at zero. You always start at zero. And if you can just overcome that fear, that fear of starting at zero, then you're on your way. Yeah. Right? And you're not necessarily always going to get results fucking quickly. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people forget. And so I was asked by somebody, when I mean somebody like a, like a friend, I was about to say a crew member, but that's a lie. And he goes... How are you able to go from zero to 100,000 in like 27 episodes? And I said to him, I think it takes discipline. 100%. Right? And then I was like trying to figure out like right now, like, okay, what is discipline? Like, how do you, how do you create discipline within yourself so therefore you can get the results of success? And I figured out like three ways about how to be disciplined. And I think that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Number one is hiding your ego. What I mean by that is you're on Instagram, you're on social media, and you see all your other friends have millions of views. Or if you're trying to go to the gym, you see all these other guys and they're like big and their muscles and you're like, oh my God, I have to work. If you hide your ego, you say, hey, listen, instead of trying to do a full workout, I know that I can't reach those levels just yet. So I am going to do the bare minimum, and then slowly increase. For us, it's do the podcast, do one clip. Then after that, it's like, okay, I got into a routine. Then it's do the podcast, do two clips. Yeah. And you start seeing little by little results. So that's step number one. Hide your ego. Know that you're starting at zero. Yeah. Know that it's okay to start small. Yeah. Number two for discipline, what I realized, is build systems around you so therefore you are being productive right you do we're doing the podcast right now or you're at the gym maybe like if you're going to the gym put your running shoes next to you so you wake up you have to put on your running shoes take all your disgusting candy bars and and put them away yeah for this podcast it's sleep in your computer (laughs) right in this case sorry i know i'm going to like is this a motivation no No, i love it Um, i love it it's really it's great i knew that i wanted this podcast to be a thing so the system is hey at this time every single week we're going to do a podcast that's step number one step number two i turned my entire bedroom you really did into a podcast it's crazy situation I, I, you, I, you remember when I realized that that was the case? You no, know what happened? Well, I, I, I guess I, we were in here and you went into your closet and then you were like, that's my bed. Yeah. And I was like, oh, is this your bedroom too? And you said, yeah. And I was like, oh, wow. Fuck, Jonathan. <laughs> because you're fucking. <laughs> I'm the biggest piece of shit ever. My podcast host is just fucking. No, you're, no, you're you're fucking really. You're a whole other beast. I well, mean, well, listen, you're, you're an incredible you're, you're, human you're being. You're not a piece of shit. It's just that I don't have the resources. No, yeah. To have another office to do the podcast. Yeah. So I said to myself, if if this is something that I but you do I have love, a bed. It's just portable. It can be moved around. Actually, and, no. I sleep on the floor with two blankets. Wait, really? Yeah, being serious. Well, dude, let's get you and blow a mattress. 
People always say that, but no, where would, I, where would I put or it? Or like a fucking pad that you can roll up. I don't know. Well, I don't know if you know this, but like I moved a lot when I was a little kid. Yeah. And I actually, I'm super comfortable. In a now, fuck that. That's fuck. No, fuck you. <laughs> I, that's how oh, people always say. They're always like, no, I actually like the floor. No, you don't. Okay. No, I don't. I slept <laughs> on the couch yesterday. It was phenomenal. Yeah, you're like, fuck, I fucking love this couch. But see what I'm saying Anyways. is. Anyways. Okay. Well, how I put it is like, how do you build systems around you so therefore you can do the thing that yeah. you do. For example, right now I have pieces of paper and books everywhere. Yeah. So that forces me to say, if I need something to read for some sort of inspiration or I need to write on my journal, there's absolutely no excuse whatsoever. Yeah. Build that system. It's there. You can write it down if you have an idea. Yeah. I love that. I love That's it. I one. love it. And the third That's thing. That's a really important yeah. one for creatives. I feel like, cause so often you have an idea and you're like, oh, yeah, that would be good. Anyways, back to driving. And then the idea – and then you forget the idea. Right. And then it's gone. It's gone. And, of course, you you can't make that idea actionable if it's gone, if it's left you. But if you write it down and it's there, you can look at it. You can be like, okay, how do we take this sentence and build a structure around it and you know, go off and shoot something? You know? Exactly. And Writing then- things down is so – or documenting your ideas. You have to put them down somewhere. And you have to force yourself. So put notebooks yeah. and pens and papers. Put all the resources that you can to make sure that it's there. And then, don't, yeah. Don't you find it funny that or interesting that f- that that is the hardest part for me? It's much harder to document the idea, write it down, than it is for me to think of the idea. Really? You know where it's? I'm like, oh, so I'll have an idea, and I'll be like, ugh. But now I have to write it down. Dude. Why don't you write down your genius idea, you idiot? Dude, and then, because if you don't write it down, it doesn't become real. It doesn't become real. Anyways, keep going. And then the third and last yeah. thing is, so we have ego. Uh-huh. Okay. We have build a system. Build systems, yeah. And then, what is this? Like, I feel like this is like a fuck it, uh, whatever. It's great. And the third one, which I think is very important, yeah. is having an accountability partner. Because what I've learned through Gamblers Anonymous, because I'm Gamblers Anonymous, uh, what I've learned through anything, believe it or not, you cannot complete anything solely alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, you can't. You just can't. You need help. So the accountability that I have is um, an editor. It's my co-host. It's um, Denzel. Denzel, who's yeah. the guy that's helping us right now. Yeah. It's because when you have an accountability person, you're saying like, hey, if I fail, you fail. A lot of the people that are accountable to me, that I'm accountable to, they are relying on me to make sure that this podcast go li- goes live. But basically, it's like the people that, are reli- the people that I'm accountable to are yeah. relying on me to make sure that this podcast exists. Yeah. And so how do you create accountability? Either you're, you're paying someone or you make someone work for you or, you know, you just have to show up. Like with my friend, when it comes to the gym, if I don't show up, mm-hmm. like he doesn't have the best of workouts and he gets fucking pissed off at me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. I think those are three really important things and, and ways to achieve success. And they all, they all, they're all rooted in discipline. Yeah. It's just a, I think it's just a constant, constant attempt at something like even with stand up too. It's just like doing it over and over and over again. Anything. It's just, there's this, um, in, in, in our apartment, yeah. um, we have like, um, it's called the, it's like a set of art rules written by this nun at this, I think like, I think it's called Immaculate Heart Academy. She's a, she's an art teacher Ooh. and, um, we, we should pull it up, but she has these like rules and one of the rules in it is like continue to throw things against the wall. Those who do it enough find success. Basically, basically is the gist of it. Exactly. And it is just like, yeah, like eventually you're like, oh, uh, cause it's not, a, it's usually not about, it's usually about how it's received. Yes. Sometimes things are made beautifully, but if it's not received well, you want to stop. Yeah. But that's hiding your ego. Yeah. That's hiding your ego. It goes back to that. I love that. Um, should we start this podcast? Oh yeah. We should start yeah. this podcast. Uh, <laughs> I love it. We're at a hundred K baby. Yeah, baby. Uh, hello, 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 hello. And hi. Hi. My name is Jonathan Garano. I'm Noah Finling. And welcome to the, the bottle club. club where we're, we're about, about to talk, talk about, about some things. things. Now, 
You know what? You know what? You know, before I get before we get into it heavy. Yeah. We, oh, we didn't get heavy. Oh, we no, no, no. This yet. is like this, I, that's just the beginning. This crew. is just the beginning. We're gonna get into crew. It. I have a. I'm just gonna say this. I hate Toyota. I hate Toyota so much. I have a gripe against Toyota. Toyota, the car company. Car, the company. Okay. You guys fuck up a lot. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of you. Just so this is. This is the thing. Yeah. They have a YouTube channel. 554,000 followers. You know what? They don't deserve that. So subscribe to this channel because we're going to beat them one day. Let's not... Toyota's our competitor? Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't let Toyota win. That's a weird competitor no, for a podcast. that is our competitor, dude. <laughs> yeah, and I got another thing. Applebee's. We're coming for you. So yes, I'm having Toyota issues yeah. since the very beginning of my time. Okay. Car accidents. Your life? Dude, car accidents, engine blowing yeah. up. This time my Bluetooth isn't yeah. working in the Toyota. So this is what I'm saying. Ladies and gentlemen, the crew, boys and girls, let's not Toyota win. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go on Spotify. Rate us five stars. Go on Apple Podcasts, five stars. And if you leave an Instagram, your Instagram handle, we will DM you a video message. But I'm telling you, I am sick and tired of Toyota winning. Let's surpass them. Anyway, that's that's all I got to say. I about do that. like <laughs> use. I do like doing that as a as a ploy to get more followers. Like make it seem like we're like some sort of nonprofit after these organizations. No, I am after these organizations. What happened with Toyota? Do they f suck? What, something recently? Dude, they just. I just have issues with them all the time. Is it I don't like how get, they always have recall? Listen, I don't want to get into it. Okay, are they after I don't you? Get into it. Are I they don't after get you? To, no, we're after them now. Okay. We're after them. Jonathan, not, Jonathan's going to wake me up in the middle of the night and be like, we have to follow this Toyota car I saw outside my house. I'm like, it's probably just some guy driving. No, no, no. It's the president of Toyota. You, we got to follow you, him. You know how we save time with that? How? We make sure people subscribe to this That's YouTube right. channel. Tips, yeah. Go on subscribe. Spotify, five stars. Yeah. Go on Apple Podcast, five stars, and leave your Instagram, and we'll do a video DM. So what's going on, man? What's going on? Um, I had a pretty insane weekend. What happened? So I was at the comedy store um, on Saturday night. I was on the patio hanging out with some friends, and there was a memorial for the late Bob Saget, who died, mm. up in the belly room. Um, which is the top room at the comedy store. Um, and we had heard that there were a lot of exclusive people, celebrities. If you will. No, no, not me. Oh, I'm okay. on the patio. <laughs> I'm outside on the motherfucking patio. Right, right, right. This right. is in the belly room. So we're, we're like, oh, maybe if we hang out long enough, like eventually like it'll clear out enough and we can go up there. Yeah. We do that. We hang out. Our friend says, you know, we, we not our friend. We, we sneak up into the belly room. And we walk into the belly room, we sit in the back row, and we see on stage is um, Seth Green. Oh my God. John Mayer, Chappelle, and the Olsen twins. And oh, okay, the Olsen twins is the Full House. The Full House, <laughs> and Candace from Full House, too. And they're, they're reminiscing about their friend, Bob Saga, and they're making jokes, and they're talking about all these old times, and... And it was so cool. It was truly like, I don't really get starstruck anymore. I feel like living in LA after yeah. eight years, I'm like, nothing really does it for me. But that was insane. Like, especially like the Olsen twins, like they are iconic. And it made me realize they're probably the first celebrity that I was like even aware of. That's right. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen go to Paris. You know what I mean? Like, like I like um, the, the Halloween movie, I think. Mary Kay and Ashley go to Halloween? No, it's like a <laughs> Toil and Trouble, I think is the oh, name of it. Oh, Toil and Trouble. Yeah. Don't it, remember that. Don't it's remember a that Mary because... Kay and Ashley movie. And if I'm wrong, crew, please tear me apart. Tear no, my ass apart. I can tear you apart. Um, but what's like one thing that they said that really got to you? Well, I, what I wanted to bring up is, yeah. so John Mayer takes his guitar out, his acoustic, his acoustic guitar out. And this is an audience of... 15 people it's such a small intimate thing i'm like i can't believe i'm here this is crazy john mayer takes his guitar i'm like holy shit i'm about to get a fucking sh this private show from john mayer and he starts playing and he starts playing this song by um crowded house that i've been singing um don't dream it's over which is like hey now hey now don't dream it's over so they're playing it, and every, and Chappelle and Seth Green and him and the Olsen twins, they're singing it together. Right. And I, you know, it made me think like, oh, wow, it's, 
music is so this is kind of like a meandering point but no, like I love this. music is so powerful in that you could totally disregard a song forever that song that they played i've always like anytime i hear that song on the radio i'm like fuck this song <laughs> i fucking this is the most boring song i hate this song it's like so and they're playing it and all of a sudden i'm like man i like this song it's like i'm it's just like i think music sometimes with the song i don't know if you ever have this where you need to like have like some sort of meaning behind it to get it. Yes. Like it, it, it hits a memory. Yeah. And like watching the Olsen twins just be like, Hey now, Hey now. And I was just like, fuck this song. And, and they were, and also like hearing the words of the song about like a, a, a love that's lost. And like in the moment they were memorializing their friend, Bob Saget. Yeah. So it was like, it was just all coming together to me. I was like, I don't know if you, have you ever had a song well, like that? First off. So every time you hear that song, you're thinking of that moment. I keep thinking of them. Olsen twins. Just like, so they were like, also they were like smoking cigarettes. They were like drinking, they were looked so cool. They were right. like really cool people to me. And they were just like, Hey now, Hey now. And it was just so were cool. Were they crying? Was anybody they crying? were like, yeah, people were crying, oh, you know, wow. like, it was it was really sweet. Everyone was just saying how much he meant to them, and and how like he just really he died doing what he loved, and there was a, a definitely a sense in the room of like hold your friends close to you because you might hold lose your them. friends close, like to really you. hold those people in your life close to you. And there's been a lot of comedians that have died in the last like three years. Yeah, some S- some suicides that I know of. Yeah, yeah. And some of some people I know and. I don't know. I just, it just made me, I was like, I was with other comedians and friends and I was just made me be like, well, I really want to like look around and remember this moment and, and just, and, and hold these people close to me and and know that and just kind of stamp this moment in my brain, you know? And I'm kind of doing that with that song a little bit. No, that's really, so you've been singing it every single time. And I have been singing it all the time. Last night I played it on my guitar. I just, I have not been able to stop singing it. It's so good and sweet and meaningful that's so beautiful yeah yeah have you ever had a song like that where you didn't like get it and then you like heard it a different way and you were like this is amazing yeah I, well i don't uh think about it i gotta think about this because well first off it's happened to me a bunch how, how did you get to this how did you get into this thing again like 15 people so we were just hanging out at the comedy store patio yeah and the night goes on it's like 12 30 right and i think we in you, we could kind of tell that that belly room had cleared out because a lot of people oh, had left. Oh, and then you did a so we little, just kind of like did a little Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo up trickle, the steps, trickle, slid, trickle. slid into the back. I love this, and I love it was this. it was just so cool. And Chappelle was like joking around, and Seth Green was so funny. I didn't know he plays Seth Green plays um Chris on Family Guy. Yes, he does. I well, you did not know. that? I didn't know that. I'm like, wow, man, that guy is so successful. He's so successful. It's like I you, think I think you make like two hundred thousand dollars an episode just for having like a voiceover. Yeah, and then you think about, wow, he's been doing that for that long, and then all the stuff he did in like two thousands, and like he, he's just been at it for so yeah, long. It's, I just remember him in Entourage for yeah. some reason right now. Or the what's that movie where like the paddle one where it's like his friend dies and all three of them go on a trip. Um, without a paddle. Without a paddle. That's a good one. There's yeah. an inappropriate scene in that. Um, with Dak Shepard, that's a little bit politically incorrect these days. I think he's doing like brown face or something. But you know, that was the time. That I'm was joking. the time. That uh, was the time. That was the time. Yeah. I think when it comes to a song, to answer your question, I'm thinking of the Maroon 5's "Won't Go Home Without You." Okay. And so when I first listened to that song, um, I was like with my girlfriend at the time, mm-hmm. and like it was very sentimental. Like it's like, oh, he's running after somebody. Yeah. He's in love with her. But then it didn't mean anything to me besides, oh, this is so cute. Yeah. And then now when I listen to it, or when I listen to it, I think of her. Yeah. And I think of chasing her Mm -hmm. and of missing her. Mm -hmm. And it became like a song that every time I wanted to feel pain, pain of like, is she thinking of me right now? Uh Or pain because of the guilt that I have because of the way that I treated her. I would play that song crazy right and so that's uh that is also some songs with Coldplay as well so that's why i like stay away from maroon five there's certain songs that come on i'm like you this is just gonna make me so sad I, you, I gotta turn it off like it is so insane to me how much of an impact music has on our emotions like yes. truly like even if you want if you were to make like the worst movie ever yes and you scored it with like the best music it's kind of watchable wait do you like adele 
Oh. Okay, so there's this song that I always play called All I Ask. Yeah. And I just belt it out all the time. Is that time. the new one? No, I don't know if it is, but... You uh, know the song that go easy on my baby. This song, like, hold I don't on. know what to do. Like, I just belt this out in the car. And you cry? Ooh, I cry all the time because I'm thinking about my life. Yeah. Take me by the hand. Her oh, song, um, Easy On Me, Babe. Or, hold on, get ready for this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, we'll get to the... I can't believe this is our podcast episode. Are we at karaoke? Yeah. Hold on, sorry, guys. Okay. So anyway, so it just goes on and on and on and on. All I ask... Oh, it, it, Sorry, sorry. So good. Is it, is it it's good. I'm cry- I don't want to cry right now. We're putting that down, guys. It's pretty crazy. Isn't that... It's so insane how music does that to you. I... I it... it it blows my mind. Okay. That's why I think music is like the hardest thing to do to me. Is there a song that ever like brings some sort of like regret in your life or not like some pain? Mm. Like all I ask thinks about like, oh, fuck, I, I'm screaming out to this girl. I'm screaming out all I ask about. My yeah, there's life. a Neil Diamond song that really encapsulates the, a, a, a piece of here my we, heart here, that's here, torn. Here we go again. With Neil, Neil, Diamond. Neil Diamond. Who's Neil Diamond? Who? You believe this guy? <laughs> Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. Our, our greatest, the songwriter of our generation. Songwriter of our generation. You know, Sweet Caroline. Oh, Sweet, Sweet Caroline. Caroline. Yeah. Ba, ba, ba. Here's another song. That's, oh, that's him. That's that's Neil Diamond. Or, uh, when I saw her face, and I'm a believer. He wrote that song. Oh, my God. That's so yeah. cool. Go he's, Neil Diamond. He's written a lot of songs that you would be like, oh, wow, I didn't know that was Neil Diamond. Wow, I got a really, is this a 1970s, 1980s guy? Uh, more like 60s and 70s. When were you born? Dude, I don't know. 1958? You grow up, up in a Jewish household and you fucking, you know. So anyway, what's this Neil Diamond song? So, okay. By the way, today's episode is called We're a Karaoke Machine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to Bottle Club Radio Station. Um, so, sorry. So. No, it's okay. Um, okay, so this Neil Diamond song is it's called I Am I Said. And it's about him moving to LA, mm-hmm. but feeling like his heart is still in Brooklyn, where he's from, yeah. and there's a line where he's like, "LA's fine, LA's fine, but the sunshine most of the time. But the feeling is laid back. Palm trees grow and the rents are low, but you know I keep thinking about making my way back. And I'm New York City, born and raised, but nowadays I'm lost between two shores. Hey, hey, hey. And then it goes. LA's fine, but it ain't home. New York's home, but it ain't mine no more. Oh, so he misses. He, he misses, misses New home, York, and misses he's home. and but he's like, I have to be here for whatever work or music or Wait, whatever. Wait, so from is. someone from New York, me from New Jersey, New Jersey. Before. I relate to that. You relate to that idea, and a lot of people that I've met on the West Coast that are from the East Coast, not all, but a lot feel that feel that sort of <sighs> torn thing of like I, 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 I need to be here but maybe I want to be there or vice versa um, so no I have a question are yeah. you searching for home like do you feel at oh home? always and I think that's something passed down from probably my ancestors of just mm. like my grandparents being in the Holocaust and losing their home and right. then going on this journey to find their home and immigrating to America and I mean you guys 40 days and 40 nights yeah we're always Jews are always yes. looking for something always looking for something <laughs> <laughs> Jews, they're always looking for something. Jews always looking for something. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Um, so, so I don't know. I, I know that was like a meandering story, but it, no, it wasn't meandering it just at all. It's kind of centered around a, this idea of music and how they. This how, is a very beautiful, beautiful. It gives so much meaning to everything. It's crazy. Like, have you have you ever watched um, This Is Us? Are you kidding me? You love it. Yeah, you love this. Are you us. fucking kidding we me? We talked about this. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm, I like how I, much is we're on, we're how much of the musical right? cues a, a part of that show. A lot. Okay, so this is what happens. And when some I, people don't like that in writing. Some people I like that's a cop care. out. I don't care. I watch but This Is good. Us. I watch This Is Us, and I just I scream love that you at that my that. television show, a television, uh, my laptop. S- scream crying. And I go, fuck! God damn it. Like, 
<laughs> you did it again! Such a good show! This, this is us watching. God damn it, Randall! This is us watching This Is Us. God damn it, Randall! <laughs> Why would you do that? They're so in touch with their emotions. You know, actually, okay, this might be like a weird segue, but uh, I've been having like this major, like cool little debate and, and, and it's going to go to like two things in like a story and yeah. like debate about it. But the first one that I want to talk about yeah. is my roommate. She gave me this article, this economist article, uh-huh. and it's like, why are American men lonely? Mm-hmm. Right. And it kind of talks about how right now in America, you know, men are constantly working. Yeah. But as they start building themselves and they're focused on this capitalist idea of making as much money as they can. So therefore they can thrive and they can, you know, maybe get bitches. I'm just joking. Mm -hmm. Um, What ends up (laughs) happening is they did a study where right now only like 15 percent of men feel as if they have close friends. Yeah. And without having close friendships with other males, you know, being vulnerable with each other, being able to like really express who they are with each other. Yeah. What ends up happening is they end up taking all these like built in emotions Mm -hmm. and they dump it on the women in their lives. Yeah. And they don't like that. And women are like, whoa, 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 we've had, like, this is a lot for us. This yeah. is enough. Like, get in touch with your emotions. And what you're seeing is, like, I think what, like 75% of the divorce rates that happen are instigated, or sorry, are initiated by women because, quote unquote, they've had, like, enough. Yeah. And so why American men are so lonely is because, one, they don't have any close male friends, but also realizing women are now realizing like, Hey, I should not be your like emotional punching bag. Yeah. So therefore I'm done with you. And that's why men are like fucking lonely. And that's why most of the suicides happen that happen Mm -hmm. are males. Yeah. So that's, and that like blew my mind to like another subject in a second. But what do you like? What do you think about that? I I totally get that. It's funny you bring this up because like <laughs> I don't even know if I should talk about this, no, but no, I don't care. Um, you know, that's definitely like Sid and I recently just had a conversation about this where I was like talking to her about something, this one thing, like way too often, and asking her advice about it, and like just. Oh, and it was all we were talking about when we were spending time together and I work a lot as is. And then the times we were spending together, I'm like talking about really, it was, she was saying I was talking about work too much. Right. And I, you know, and she was right. Like she is right. I, I was, and you know, and, and it's like, she was like, it's enough. Like, well, let's talk about something else. Like, I love you, but let's talk about something else. And just like, it's just funny you bring that up. Cause I'm literally just dealt with this a little bit, you know, because your wife is not your emotional bucket. Yeah. Well, it's like, yeah. And I, and I ask her, you know, she's a writer and a comedian. I respect her opinion. So I'll ask her for her opinion on things. And it's one thing when it's like between 10 and 3 PM, but like, I'm always working kind of in my head. So it'll be like, you know, we're brushing our teeth and it's 11 PM. And I'm like, so what do you think about the opening scene of this script? And she's like, I don't want to break story right now. <laughs> I'm brushing my fucking teeth. I want to enjoy you right now. I want to enjoy you right let's, now. Let's giggle. Let's laugh a little bit. And you know, I'm like, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. She told me, and it's early on in our relationship where it's like, okay. And I, you know, there was an instinct in me to be like defensive about that. And yeah. I, and I was a little bit like my feelings were a little bit hurt because it's almost like you're embarrassed. You're yeah. like, oh, shit, how long have I been doing this? Yeah. Like, what the f- I'm all wow. I don't want to be that guy where I'm only talking about work. Ugh. I gave it some time to breathe. And then like we talked through it the next day. And like I was like, you know what? You're right. And let's just say I just need to set some boundaries um, with you about that stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know, it doesn't. And you're telling me. And we can fix it. And, but what ends up happening is there's no communication so that someone feels by the end of it, that's when they're like, I've had enough because they weren't clearing their plate through the relationship. It's like, Hey, let's put some boundaries together. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. Let's figure this all out. Yeah. Let's like, let's just work within this 
you know, um, and communicate that, you know, let me just set this boundary here, whatever it is. But when you don't set boundaries and you just keep piling on your plate, it ends up being this huge eruption and whatever the problem is becomes a lot bigger than, than what it's really about. You know, I totally agree with but, that. But it's a great article. And I, I, I even, I have a lot of friends and I feel lonely. So I can't imagine, you know, I, I feel, I always am like, I don't have any friends. I'm always thinking that my brain somehow goes to that place. Do well, you do that? I, I do that, but I do that a lot. Yeah. I do that a lot. And this is something that I've been working on, thank God, for my therapist. But um, so the idea is because of the system that we live in, America or whatever, and the culture that we're bringing in, yeah, a lot of how we get this, like, hey, I love you. A lot of those like affirmations that we get of like, you're amazing, I love you, all derives, especially if you're a man, from the foundation of, what did this man achieve? And so, especially as a, especially for me when it comes to like performance, let's say for example, as in like, I'm here to help somebody, I'm here to like, you need me and I'm delivering. And so when they go, hey, you are a good man because you've, you know, achieved this, then it becomes, I deserve it. And many men feel because they haven't quote unquote achieved what their goals are, they feel as if they don't deserve to be vulnerable, vulnerable enough. They don't deserve love. And if they get it, they begin to second guess themselves in their head. Like, wait a minute. Can I actually be loved for who I am as a person, even though I haven't achieved anything? We're so stupid. Men are so dumb. No, we need to be just like, you need to truly, we need to be in the fields like killing, you know, antelope. Like that's what we need to be. I don't think we're dumb. I don't think we were meant to think. I really think men were meant whoa, to whoa, do whoa, whoa. work. I, I just think the system has built a, I, this, yeah, I think that. But I think the, a, the system right now is, sure, yeah. is, is kind of difficult to say, hey, bro, be vulnerable. Yeah, totally. You can be loved for who you are as a person without yeah. achieving anything. Yeah. And so therefore, you should be loved when you wake up during the, Yeah. hundred percent. So, so therefore when a woman goes, I like you, I, I think you're great. And even though you haven't achieved anything, you could say, wow, I accept this and I'm not going to run away from this. Yeah. And that is something. And if you think about it, if you accept it and not run away from it, you will achieve something. For yourself, I guess. Yeah, for yourself, yourself and and yeah, but also like some beautiful relationship. Yeah, always oh, some beautiful relationship. You know? Like okay, so for my therapist, for example, it's funny. Like I talk about my trauma, how I got abused, and all of these random things. But then she goes, Jonathan, you're really smart, or Jonathan, wow, you're really funny and you're amazing. And I took a step back and I began to break down and cry right, in front right. of her. And the reason why I started crying, not through the, not because of the trauma, well, it's because of the affirmation. Again, it's like, wait a second, therapist. I am here not wanting anything from you. I'm not here trying to fix anything from you. Yeah. Like with most other like women or whatever, like I'm always trying to perform in such a way. With my therapist, it's not a performance. It's about you. I, it's all about me yeah. and only me. And so here I am and suddenly she compliments me for who I am as a person. And then it goes into my man brain of lack of vulnerability. And I'm thinking, did I just manipulate her for her to say that? Yeah. But where, what am I getting out of it? And I don't know how to process it. And then suddenly I just break down and I cry. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You don't, whenever I compliment you, I feel like you don't take it well. Well, because when I was younger, like it was, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I need to be needed. I need like if you, you so you think once I compliment you, I don't need you anymore, and then you're like, well, you don't need me anymore. So so why would I let you think you don't need me? Well, for you to compliment me, I have to be secure with myself that I have achieved something, and most of the times I feel like I have yet to achieve something. Yeah. There's, so there's, when I'm like, you did a great job with the TikTok in the last few weeks, whatever. You're great. You're doing a great job with the clips, right? And you're like, yeah, whatever. Because in your head, you're like, no, I'm not. We set a goal, hundred thousand, and until <laughs> I hit that goal, hundred thousand, I'm a fucking piece of shit. Yes, but I should be very grateful and like, I should be very grateful in that aspect. I, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to be like, it's again back to the emphasis of being present. Yeah, yeah. Because and I sh and and also because of the fact that as men in the system, we're still trying to figure out how to be friends with other men yeah yeah and how to be vulnerable with men yeah i mean granted i have friends that are six foot one and they cry and i love that yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And it's like being You're talking about me All the time I'm six foot one Of course The crew doesn't know, not that, know that Does not know that Yeah But do you get what I mean? Yeah, totally, totally I, That's a great article you, you, We'll have to send it to the crew It's it's fascinating Right, it'll be in the description But also It's, it's, like, it's, it's like I'll put like a little Thing it, here It's fascinating Like I can't even imagine how Sad it must have been to be a man I mean obviously It was very sad to be anything but a man In, in the On a at all even now yeah. you know it's like a, being a man is one of the easier things you could be given in life you know and then it gets broken down by race about, and like, stuff we're talking about like men and emotions yeah we're talking about just men and emotions but like being how sad men in like the 40s or the 50s probably were but it's like had no idea what it was they, like if they felt sad they were like what the hell's that i'm yeah. gonna kill that feeling <laughs> they just like punch themselves I told uh, yeah. Take out their belt. They start hitting their <laughs> kids. Start, no, I don't know. Sucks. I don't know emotion. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it's it's crazy. Like well, thank God. Thank God for therapy. Thank but God for therapy. I wish. Yeah. But here, then this pushes. Then this pushes to another thing. Yeah. This like it pushes. It pushed me to this like thought, and the thought was this. Okay, this might be a little controversial, and maybe you can help me with this, but I believe that the reason why young men objectify and hate women to a degree is because they don't interact with women in the real world. They're in an, they're in a system right now where the first time where they interact with women, it comes from porn. It comes from only fans. It comes from entertainment stating that women are here to provide in some, their eyes, they, in their they're eyes, seeing it right? that way, yeah. Or it's being downloaded into their brain, right? It's being downloaded into their brain that men, that women are here, yeah, to provide a sense of you could say quote unquote love or sexual pleasure, yeah. to this man, yeah. And so if that's the first thing, how they perceive women, because it's the first thing, that's the first thing that they're in. Inter- that's how they're interacting with women right yeah, now. Right? Yeah. That's the first thing how they're interacting with women yeah, right now. Yeah, it's the first way that women are being brought into their lives. Yeah. So when they go out into the real world and they meet a is girl. Is that true, you think? I think it's true. But this is what well, we can debate about yeah, this. Yeah. So when they go out to the real world outside of porn, entertainment, OnlyFans, and they meet a woman and the woman is like, yo, 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 I don't like you. Or yo, 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 don't approach me. Or like, ah, oh, why are you texting me? You're so needy. And because they're not receiving that love, even though they were programmed that, hey, I'm supposed to get this. Yeah. Then animosity builds up, anger builds up, and that's where you get like the red pill or whatever those like you get, yeah, incels. Freaks, yeah. Right. Those incels. And yeah. so and so I think the best way for men to one not be lonely is have more male friends yeah and be vulnerable with them and number two how you can stop like hating women i guess you could say is hey i'm going to i'm going to stop porn i'm going to stop only fans so i'm going to i'm going to stop only fans i'm going to to stop all that like discipline yourself build a system to stop all that and go out and start having friends and start having women as solely Friends, platonic yeah. friends yeah while also loving yourself enough to become a better man and therefore you become less needy but also you have the ability to be vulnerable mm-hmm. and you know what women like and dislike because of that platonic friendship that you have that finally when you meet or see a woman that you find attractive mm-hmm. you can go up and be emotionally intelligent, mm-hmm. not needy, and actually treat them like a person. Yeah, I mean, I you really think the people's first interactions are like OnlyFans and porn? Or is it like it becomes that? Because I'm just like, you don't have like toddlers like yeah. with like OnlyFans accounts. <laughs> but there's there's studies where like I definitely think because like, of the internet, right? You're looking at how young do you think pu- kids? 11, are, 12 years old. Okay, so yeah, then from eleven on, there you're probably right. I mean, most of their interactions definitely, especially especially now, because it's like you're not really going to school, or maybe you are, but it's limited. You can't really interact. So like, 
the most intimate interactions you're having with the opposite sex is probably yeah online and then be- that's scary man yeah, and but be- and then because because of that then you're going out and you're like okay women are here to provide me love and provide me sexual pleasure and then you go out and you meet women in the modern world and they're like whoa this guy is needy and he's a little too much no i reject you yeah and then they're like, "What the fuck?" Like, this guy a... needs to wants to watch me on a computer all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so weird. This guy keeps paying me five dollars to look at my feet. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. You go to a modern woman. Here's six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. But like, can I text you? But at the same time, right? Then, then like, but then then I, well, I was talking to my friend about this, and he's like, "Okay, so are you telling me that you're supposed to put women on pedestals?" And like, no. bro, no, that's not what I'm saying. It shouldn't be put on anything. It should just be like a relationship like you have with your guy friends. Exactly. Because if you, if you put a woman on a pedestal, you're, you're going to be heartbroken because you're, you're saying to a person that, Hey, I'm, I'm so needy. Yeah. You can't put anyone on a pedestal because you're, you're just going to be disappointed. Yeah. You got to love yourself. You have to love yourself and you have to know that everyone's trying to do that themselves. They're trying to love themselves and they're trying, they're trying their best and people make mistakes and if you put someone on a pedestal and they all of a sudden like behave outside of the lines that uh, that is that pedestal, then you're like, fuck this person. But right. it's like, it's kind of a hard ask. Don't it's put a tall any, order. Don't put anybody, a man or a woman on a pedestal because you're just going to get your heart broken. And, it, and also it's you, really scary you how to focus on yourself. Yeah. It's really scary how life and the way it seems like our economy is flowing that like they want you to be more and more independent, more and more in solitude, more and more like obsessed with one thing, you yeah. know? And like, that's how we're, that's, it seems like that's the direction. That's like, that makes more money. That's like where the incentive is. How do we, how do we control your eyeballs for 24 hours a day looking at one thing? And then guess what happens? Then you get addicted to, well, not just yeah. that you lack real, emotions connection connection yeah to be vulnerable and really what what it takes is just to reach out your hand hand touching me hey touching now you, hey now touching hey me baby. sweet caroline it all goes back to ba, neil man ba, ba. it's all about neil so yeah so that's like something that i'm still debating on and i'm trying to to, to figure that out but I, I hopefully i'm on the right track i don't know i just because you know sometimes you get those tiktok comments like oh these guys are um what are they called like simps and i don't i don't think we're like simps i just think what am like, i simping i'm fucking married i know you're you're married i'm not simping anything i'm just truly speaking with vulnerability and I, for the most part i'm being as honest as i possibly can yeah, on because, this podcast because you're like hey i'm noah i'm not going to put anybody on a pedestal and i'm just here to fucking communicate what my needs are yeah i love that yeah um there's I'm going to tell a story yeah, go about this like breakup situation mm-hmm. because some of the comments on TikTok, oh my God, they're like, how many guys, how many person, how many, how many, how many girls has this guy dated? Yeah. And he, he's always, he's always, he's always like getting hurt, blah, blah, blah. And I thought about it and I'm like, wait a second, I'm not perfect. I've fucked up royally. And Rorally? Yeah, Rorally. Yeah, you, so you roared on your uh, way out? It's like, think, like, I'm out of here. Think about it. <laughs> No, no, it's more like. Okay. I'm a lion. Oh no, no, I'm a lioness. Not a chewy. Not a chewy. Chewbacca. Oh, Star Wars. That's where it's come from. <laughs> you know what? Have Pretty you ever thought, That's gonna be have, a my SNL rule. Have you ever thought about going to Disneyland, dressing up as Chewbacca, auditioning? <laughs> Why does that turn me on? Actually. <laughs> I'm getting a little like. I'm no. Getting, no. <laughs> no. Be vulnerable. No, not that vulnerable. <laughs> Anyways. Um. But, uh, so yeah, so the girl of six years that I dated, yeah, when we first got together, yeah, um, I was also kind of like, there was this, also this other girl mm-hmm. that I recently broke up with. Yeah. So I was dating my primary girlfriend and there was this other girl that I broke up with and during college, during one week, we went on this retreat. Mm-hmm. And I went on uh, by myself. I went on this retreat by myself. And who was at that retreat 
the girl that I recently broke up with. Mm -hmm. And we started interacting and there was chemistry again. And then everybody around us, because we had a party, was like, hey, you guys are going to hook up. You guys are going to have sex. You guys should get it going. <laughs> People were really saying that to you? Yeah, some guy was like, you're going to have sex. Oh, man. And, you know, you're young. You're, you know. Yeah. 20, 21. It's and funny how young people are so excited for their friends to have sex. <laughs> yeah. They'd be like, dude, you're going to have sex tonight, man. Do it. Do it. Do it. Here's the condom. Open the door. Let's go. Yeah. What is that scenario? But anyways, keep going. They have a camera that we don't know about. <laughs> so, so I end up, you know, I end up uh, cheating at that moment oh. with, with this girl that liked me. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what happened, but I end up, I came back from the retreat and I go see my girlfriend and we're in the elevator and she kisses me like, hello. Oh man. And then she like her eyes like light up mm -hmm. and I could see like pain and she steps back and she looks at me and she goes, what did you do? Wait, so she kissed you and said that? Yeah, like she knew that I cheated. From your lips? From my lips, or she just felt it. I think women just know when you cheat. They know everything. She literally just, she's like, oh, hi. And then she's like, what did you wow. <laughs> do? Yeah. And my heart sank. Were you going to say something? <clears throat> Were you going to say something? To her? Yeah, about it. I don't know. And I looked at her and I said, yeah, I, uh, I'm so sorry, but I, that girl that was there, yes. I, I didn't say we cheated. I, it's just like, yes, I did. Like, I just looked at her and I said, she's like, did you? And I look at her and I go, yes. And it sucks because she told me that that night while she was like laying in bed, she just thought the entire time, thinking, am I not good enough? Am I not good enough? Am I not good enough? And luckily we were able to like fix kind of and get past it. But that was always in the back of our mind. I bet. Yeah. And it was always in the back of my mind. Yeah. And even Did though you feel bad, bro, like even though we were together for like another like four years. Yeah. I still, to this day, think about that moment where I cheated and where she looked at me in pain and said, what did you do? Yeah. And me then imagining her laying in bed saying, am I not good enough? Yeah. And it hurts me to this day because it's like, I don't like, how do I, I don't know how to make amends with that. I mean, I think <clears throat> I'm not condoning cheating, obviously, but you're, you know, you made a mistake. Um, and I think you make amends by like moving forward and tr and not doing that to someone else again. And I think you make amends by making an amends to her. Mm. Um, if you haven't already, this was a while ago, so I'm sure you have in some, in some respect. Um, and then I think you have to eventually, I do think you have to, it, it, it wasn't like you did something that was like, you know, so like cheating's bad, but you didn't like, you know, hurt anyone physically or like do some sort of criminal act. Like you cheated and we live in a society where you should be able to apologize and try to be better. And I think at the, at some point you have to kind of forgive yourself. Cause if you Man. don't, if you don't forgive yourself, then you'll probably do it again. I'm still, still working on that. I mean, yeah. luckily thank you God, will. everybody you will. that I see wants to be in an open relationship. So thank God. <laughs> Is that like how I joke around? But you luckily know. we live in LA in the, in the 2020s and everyone wants to fuck everyone. Yeah. I don't know. Girls are it's tough, man. I've been cheated on. I've been cheated on. What happened? I was seeing a girl and um, she, <clears throat> she, I caught her cheating on me with uh, 
two other guy, three other guys, three other guys in a shower. Okay, so <laughs> really, <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, this is a crazy. Okay, story. explain the story and then we'll end. Um, so it was in summer camp. Yeah, we were camp counselors. And um, there was like a party for all the people whose day off it was. And I had been seeing this girl who was also a counselor um, for a couple weeks. And we were all going to this party, this house that, that of, of another girl who also had the day off. So this the girl I'm seeing goes up there a little bit before me. I have to stay at camp and work a little bit later with a couple other dudes. And me and these dudes, once we get off work, we drive up to this house in the middle of the night for this like party in the mountain like little mountain cabin you know we're in the middle of nowhere How summer fun. camp very fun so we get there and i i like couldn't find the girl i was seeing so i was like all right i'm just going to drink a little bit and you know enjoy myself and whatever i'll see her when i see her i can't see her for, i can't find her for a while so i start looking through the house start asking people do you know where you know so and so is yeah finally i i get to like a the bathroom and I walk by and I listen and I hear the girl I'm seeing. I hear her laugh. And then I hear like other guys in there. And then I hear a girl, another girl. And I'm like, what is going on? And I, it's like, it seems like they're coming to the door to open it. So I like run away and I go behind a corner and I like peek out and I see all of them like coming out like basically naked putting on towels and I literally like my heart drops I'm like oh no and I like run outside onto the front lawn of this house and my friend grabs me and he and he, cause he, he was like what's going on and I'm like I think she cheated on me with three guys in a shower oh my god my heart I'm like I'm pretty fucked up and I'm like my heart's dropped I'm like beating so fast he's like come on like let's go like we end up he ends up him and I like get in a we like stay at a hotel nearby like I can't be around that for the night. I come back. I come back the next morning. Yeah. Because I find out the guys who I drove to this house who I have to drive home are the guys, guys that, that she had the thing with. And I find out that they all had like a yeah, like a little orgy together. What? Um yeah, it was crazy. And um yeah, man, it was it was nuts. It was really nuts. But in and like you drove them home, and then and then she was like, "I'm sorry." She was like, "I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that." And I was like, oh, "It feels like you did." And then it, you know, it ended up being like, I kind of parted ways with her for the most part that summer. And then, you know, maybe we like kind of hung out a couple more times, but I was mostly like, "Okay, we shouldn't be a thing." Like, if you want to yeah. go do that, that's fine. But like, I don't want to be with someone who need who wants to go do that. And then me and the guys, I felt like very betrayed by them for so long. And like, wait, they were your friends. Yeah, they were. Yeah, we were friends. Yeah, it was it was sad. But they ended up like apologizing. Also, like I do. It's not okay what they did. But I was like very young when this happened. I was like 20, maybe. And I think had that happened now, I think I would now be able to recognize that the relationship I had with that girl was yes. never like looking back on what that relationship it was. Wasn't it wasn't really like serious and exclusive. Like, well, I mean, you're also, 20. I'm just not, uh, yeah. And I was naive and she was probably like a little bit older than me. And I probably just felt like it was, you know, I was just like a little bit whipped, you know, wow. but still like in that moment, like seeing them come out of the shower and then hearing, and then like hearing that she like, yeah, like that they all had like a, you know, a threesome. A, a threesome. Sorry, One, a foursome. Looking back at it, I'm like, damn, I wish I was on the other side of that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was on that side, you know. I, I wish I joined a lot. Yeah, I wish I, yeah. Or, or yeah, like I could have, it was all about perspective, you know. Yeah. But my heart was so broken, dude. I was literally like, I ran outside. I was hyperventilating on the grass, like crying. My friend like picked me up, brought me to the hotel. And he was like, it's okay. But like, it was, it was crazy. Driving back to camp with those guys in the car was so awkward. So, so, so awkward. Oh my God. Yeah. But now I don't care. It's like, I don't hold grudges against them. It was just, whatever. They were, they were probably a couple years older than me. Like we were I all mean, like young kids. I'm glad that you don't, I mean, yeah, you don't have any grudges, but that's traumatizing. It was, dude, it was crazy. Cause I had, I really like, in, I really liked this girl and in, in my, my 20 year old self really liked this girl. And had been like, I had felt I had been pretty committed to her um, for like a month before this happened. Um, 
And then that happened. I was like, really? Like, wait, what? It's totally blindsided. Right. And I, it, it really hurts. It's just like you feel betrayed and you're like, whoa, you feel embarrassed. It's like that same fe- – those feelings when Sid called me out about like talking about work too much. It's like you feel ashamed. You're like, what did I do wrong? Isn't it kind of funny when, when someone cheats? It, the one Yeah, the, I'm like, I did something wrong. One of, well, here's the thing. Now I just realized my ex-girlfriend – was like in a fucking empath. So when I cheated, she was thinking, what did I do wrong? Because you're such a big empath. When you got cheated on by like a fucking I felt the orgy, same thing. you thought, am I not good enough? I, yeah, I was like, I'm, well, these guys also were like, these guys are really hot. Like, I will be <laughs> honest, like the guys she did were really hot men. And I was like a boy. I was like, I, I just started like getting hair on my chest. Like, Was she really hot? She was very pretty, yeah. She was very good looking, yeah. And and she was a l- older, a little bit more mature than me, I think. And like these were like men, so it's like <laughs> I don't know. I get it. I it's still not okay, but I just you're like ah, it makes sense. It just does make sense to me. Like looking back on it, that's how I kind of feel right now. Where like if if like uh, she's gonna get fucked by a dude, she's gonna get fucked by a, a guy that's like good for her. Yeah, it, it yeah totally. It, it, but in that moment, it, it is heartbreaking. It, Cheating is the worst, and Man, it's so, the worst feeling. Yeah, it's, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's it's okay. Obviously, I'm like totally over it, but yeah, it, it really is the worst feeling. And I think I I just I am really bad. Uh, you know, I've talked about like getting in, in the trouble I've gotten yeah. in on on this podcast. I don't like f- being in trouble. I don't like feeling guilty. Like I I cannot handle the feeling. Mm-hmm. So that one, I'm like would never want to cheat, but like knowing that if I cheat and I will feel like that and I, I hate that feeling more than anything. You don't want to give it to somebody else. Yeah. It's like, I don't, well, I don't want to give it to someone else and I don't want to feel that. So I'm like, you're going to feel, if you cheat Noah, you're going to feel what that feeling that you fucking hate where you're in trouble and you have to confess. So don't Cause cheat. I can't lie. I'm like the worst liar. Don't cheat. Yeah. Oh no, I would never, I would never cheat. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. What a, is that crazy? That's so crazy. But first off, what, why am I hearing so many people having uh, threesomes? But I mean, like, the devil threesome. Like, I'm hearing that so often. <laughs> One girl, two guys. Oh. Like, it's, I think it's, like, the new thing right now. I mean, if you are a single person, like, I feel like you only live once, man. Go for it. I Wear agree. a condom. Get yourself tested. Make sure you're, you're safe and make sure it's consensual and... I don't know. Have a good time, man. Go out there. That's hey, don't I, tell me about it. That, that's how I see it. If things are coming your way and it's all good, <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah. You know? Anyway, um, holy shit, is this episode called like cheating? Getting? <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend cheated with three guys at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, before we end, yeah. uh, just remember, guys. You know, if if you leave a five star review on That's Apple right. Podcasts and leave your Instagram, you know we leave, we will we'll DM you. And also, don't forget, we can't let Toyota win. Toyota can't win. Well, one of our five star review uh, people, we're gonna hit them up in a second. But, bro, I mean, crew, if you're listening to this, I repeat, go on Spotify, five star, subscribe to the YouTube channel, do the thing on Apple because we can't let Toyota. Win. We can't. Okay. But one of our PDX.CXS, our five star um, yeah, reviewer yeah. last week, she remember she said she would write, or sorry, they said that they would write us a poem. Yeah. They sent me one. Okay. Don't Should I read it? Screenshot it and send it to me, but I want to please read it. Should I read it out loud? Okay. Yes. Uh, this is, by the way, I'm going to put some music right here. Yeah. I'm going to okay. do my, 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 my slam poetry sort of. Oh, this is slam poetry. Yeah. I'm going to do my slam poetry okay, so no sort music, of. No music. Out. No, no. You should do the music too. Okay. This poem is called Kindred Spirits. I've always been interested in the term kindred spirits. I mean, how can a soul find another soul through the separation of death, living 30 lives and still managing to find each other? I started to wonder if I ever have one or maybe if death may have been too strong this time and finally separated my kindred spirit. Now I'm stuck jamming puzzle pieces together that didn't even come from the same box. I'm stuck looking in the mirror, knowing that this may be the closest I come to having another half. I'm stuck. Living alone, waking up and not knowing I'm home, I'm stuck. 
running from myself and chasing something I don't even know exists? How far do I have to run? How much pain do I have to go through before I find my kindred spirit? Maybe kindred spirits aren't even real. Maybe they're just something to make people hopeful for the future. But I would rather my heart be ripped out and stomped on then be, then be given false hope because that is the worst pain I could possibly imagine. Who knows? Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions. Maybe I just have to wait a little bit longer. But that little bit feels like an eternity. And that is a poem called Kindred Spirits by pdx.cxs. Holy shit, that Isn't was that beautiful. great? Also, how fun is it to talk like that? My name is Noah Finling. I am here on the podcast. Boom. I love the rhythm that you had. Thank you, PDX. So that's what happens, you guys, when you give us reviews. Christian Scott, that's his name. Christian Scott. Well, thanks, Christian Thank Scott. Thank you, Christian. Also, you know what's really funny? I mean, really amazing? Yeah. Guess what? The Guess what's happening on our YouTube channel on Monday? Oh, we have a new bonus episode yeah. coming. Bonus episodes are coming out. Anyway, get ready for that. Get ready for that. I love you, L-U-V, y'all. Where can we find you, Noah? Um, you can find me at Noah Built the Ark on all platforms. Uh, my name is, uh, and you can find me at Jonathan Garano, and then also follow the Bottle Club. That's right. Guys, fuck Toyota. Fuck anyway, Toyota. <laughs> peace. Peace.